I really need you to do is make sure you're focusing your attention on me, because when you get to page... Oh my gosh. You're so popular. <laughs> That's what you said yesterday. Um, I remember what I said. Hey, welcome, Miracle. Glad you're here. Just show up whenever you feel like it, okay? Don't rush. Take a deep breath. You okay? All right, awesome. So, what's going to happen if you don't pay attention? Not that I'm talking towards the back of anybody's head because they're not looking is you're going to get to page 106 and then you're going to come up and say I don't get it. I don't like understand or anything like that. So could you like help me or anything maybe? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick lesson. And we're first going to talk about the powers of 10. But, Rainy, let me ask you a question first. Are you with me here, Rainy? Yes. If I do 8 times 10, what is the answer? 80. 80. See, you already know how to, to multiply by powers of 10. Rainy, are you with me still? Yes. What if I did 8 times 100? 800. 800. Now, what you just did is you moved the decimal point. Because the decimal point in the number eight, if it's not visible, it's at the end. Every whole number has a decimal point. If you don't see it, it's at the end. I'm just saying. Stick with me now, people. So, when Rainey multiplied eight times 10, she moved the decimal point from here to the right one place. When Rainey multiplied 8 times 100, she moved the decimal point from here to the right two places. Guess what happens when you multiply 8 times 1,000? What are you doing then? What is 8 times 1,000? 8,000. 8, so then I move the decimal point from here, where it was, three places. To the right. Y'all y'all did this. You've all done this. You're all like, duh, Mr. McMurray, this is so easy. That will erase you. <laughs> so let's, th now you have done all that, but now this is where y'all freak out because if I gave this, and I said first multiply it by one. And if I gave this, and I said multiply it by ten. And if I gave this, and I said multiply it by a hundred. And I gave this, and I said multiply it by a thousand. That's no different than what Rainy just helped me with. No different. All it is, is moving the decimal point. Just like we did with the 8. 8 times 10 was 80. So I moved it from right behind the 8 to the right one place. So let's call on um, Matthew. Matthew, when you multiply a number by 1, what happens to that number? It stays the same. Stays the same. So 3 and 19 hundredths times 1 is 3 and 19 hundredths. Now, Matthew, I'm multiplying 3 and 19 hundredths by 10. So what's going to happen to it? I move it to the right, one place. So this now is 31 and 9 tenths, which is greater than 3 and 19 hundredths. If I'm multiplying by a number that is greater than 1, my answer is going to, be bi is going to get bigger. Is he trying to play footsies with you? Because what? Matthew, what are you feeling guilty? I didn't even call anybody's name. <laughs> Matthew, now I'm multiplying three and nineteen hundredths times one hundred. 
times. Now I move the decimal place over two times. 319. 319. Now Matthew, three and nineteen hundredths times one thousand. I move it over three times. In able to, in order to move it over three times, I have to add a zero at the end. So it's this will save you a lot of time because nobody wants to go through. And uh, let's do three hundred nineteen times a thousand. Times one zero 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 and then go zero uh, zero zero and then zero 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 and then zero 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 zero. Nobody wants to do all that when you can just move a decimal point by powers of ten, ten, one hundred, one thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand, a million. As long as it's a one as the first number and zeros all the way behind it. You're golden. Now let's look at one more of these, and then we're going to do a couple multiplying by tenths and hundredths. So um, I'll pick the number. Brooks, pick a number between zero and nine. Five. Five. Brooks, pick a number between three and five. Five is really not between three and five, but you know, I'll go ahead and take that. Um, Brooks, pick the number nine. Nine. Good job, Brooks. So this is our number we're going to use this time. This is the number we're going to use this time. Please make sure you keep your four legs of your chair on the floor. I'm just saying, I'm trying to save lives, folks. We're going to multiply this number by one. We're going to multiply Brooks' number by 10. We're going to multiply Brooks' number by 100. We're going to multiply Brooks' number by 1,000. And yes, I'll be happy to call on JJ to help me with one of these. <laughs> Who knows which one, JJ? Who really knows? Number one. Courtney. I want 5 and 59 hundredths multiplied by 1 equals 5 and 59 hundredths. See, JJ, I'm, I'm only giving her the hard ones. When we get to the easy ones, I know you'll hook me up. <coughs> you'll hook me up. Miracle! 5 and 59 hundredths times 10. No. We're moving my decimal point one place to the right. Good. 55 and 9 tenths. 59 and, or 55 and 9 tenths. Oh, oh, Kate. Help me on this next one. I know where Kate is. I'm not. See, if I look at you, that means you're like, maybe I better behave. And I can call on Kate, but still be looking at you, because I said the word Kate, not implying that you're Kate, because she's Kate. But I'm looking at you because you're playing, and then I'm calling on her because I want her to answer. So Kate, 5 and 59 hundredths times 100. <laughs> Five hundred fifty-nine. Decimal point goes there. Rock on, Kate. Oh, I said I was going to call on somebody. Um, it was JJ. JJ, five and fifty-nine hundredths times a thousand. Five and <laughs> I'm moving the decimal point three places to the right because I have three zeros. Good. Awesome. <laughs> Great job. See, now if anybody watches this, they're going to think that you uh, actually told me the answer that they just couldn't hear you out there. They're not going to know that you were just staring at me while I put the numbers down. They'll never know that. <laughs> they're going to think you knew it. Uh, it's That's what I'm talking about. It's, 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 it's still recording. Oh. oh. 
He's been recording for 10 minutes already. <laughs> okay, now let's look if we multiply by hundredths and tenths. So this time, I'm going to take uh, Brooks. Pick a number between five and seven. No, seven's not between five and seven. Between five and seven. Thank you, six, good. Six. Brooks, pick a number between one and three. Two. Brooks, pick a number between seven and nine. Seven's not between seven and nine. Eight. Brooks, pick a number between zero and two. One. Good job, Brooks. Now, so we have 6,281. If I multiply that one by one, it becomes what, Lawrence? Good, 6,281. Multiply a number by one, that number re remains the same. I think it's the multiplicative rule of one. But if I take... Now I'm going to multiply it by one-tenth. So, Chase, is one-tenth less than or greater than one? Less than one. So if I multiply by 1 and my number stays the same, if I multiply by less than 1, what's going to happen to my number, Chase? It gets smaller. I wish you guys would really stop talking. So nothing, nothing of that requires you to respond. So as Chase just pointed out, if I multiply by less than 1, this number is going to get smaller. So if I multiply by one-tenth, that means I'm taking my decimal point and moving it one place to the left. So by one-tenth, this becomes 628 and one-tenth. If I multiply this number by one-hundredth, my decimal point is going to move two places to the left, 62 and 80 one-hundredths. So multiplying by 10, I go to the right, powers of 10, go to the right, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, go to the left. We all good? Yes. We all good. Be kind to one another. Peace out. Boom, shaka, laka, love y'all.